caught my wife cheating on Easter Sunday. I, 28M, discovered evidence that my wife, 27F, was having an affair on Easter Sunday. The following day, I confronted her with undeniable proof. I left and have not spoken to her since, and we are getting a divorce. I feel utterly destroyed, and even the thought of divorcing seems like a pointless gesture. My wife and I had what I believe was a perfect relationship. We were best friends and seemed to complement each other in numerous ways. We grew up together, dated throughout high school and college, and were each other's firsts in terms of a sexual relationship. We attended the same university but pursued different fields of study, and we got married two years after graduation. We moved to a major city close to our hometown to be near our families. I found a job as an engineer, earning a decent salary with benefits, while she worked as a teacher at a prestigious private school, a job she loved. We made good money together so we spent a lot of time together. We traveled, dined out frequently, and every night felt like a date night. Even among our friends we were always together. Our sex life was great, and less than four times a week was considered a dry spell for us. We had what I thought was a fantastic life together. However, I've come to realize that it was all a lie. We were planning to have children, but now that dream feels shattered. I cannot stop crying, and the idea of being a father someday seems impossible now. Easter morning at the break of dawn, we were supposed to help at our church, hiding Easter eggs on the property for kids to find later. We got up and threw on some clothes without showering before driving to the church together. We groggily helped hide obvious eggs for the small children and more secretive eggs for the older kids later that day. My wife took many pictures on her phone of us, as well as many members of the congregation. We all ended up having coffee and donuts while conversing before heading home. I'd driven to the church, but got my wife to drive us home. She commented she was returning to bed for a few hours when we returned. I wanted to preview the college basketball championship game the next night because my father was a Baylor graduate. We brought my wife's iPad along, which I used all the time like it was my very own. I never expected to see anything, and she didn't anticipate it showing me anything. I'm not very tech-savvy, so I still don't know what happened exactly. But I was reading an article as we were walking into the house. In the lower right corner, an icon that said something about photos appeared, and picture after picture appeared one atop the other. I don't know if my wife's phone was syncing to the iPad or our Wi-Fi. Again, I'm at a loss. I saw the pictures were the ones my wife had just taken minutes before outside the church, so I continued reading. Suddenly, a few pictures flashed by that looked like they contained nudity, which was very out of character for my wife. I tried tapping on the pictures to go back. But it was like the photos weren't on the iPad, it just showed each one to me for a split second. I opened the photo file on the iPad, but I could find nothing remotely pornographic stored on the iPad. I realized none of the photos taken at the church were on the iPad, yet I'd seen them flash by. My wife went into the kitchen and got a bottle of water to take with her as she headed back to bed. I watched her walk up the stairs, and for the first time in the history of our relationship, I felt like she might be hiding something from me. I searched every file I could find on the iPad, hoping I could find what I'd seen. But I eventually realized to ease my mind, I'd have to check my wife's phone. I walked upstairs and found her sleeping soundly in our bed. I grabbed her phone off of the charger and took it into our bathroom. We'd never had an open or closed phone policy. We just used each other's devices at will, with nothing to hide. So, discovering her passcode had been changed made my heart nearly stop. I tried it again and again at different speeds. No doubt it had been changed. My eyes welled up with tears, just knowing my wife was probably hiding something from me. It was a sign that there was something unknown to me that I truly needed to know. I returned to the bedroom and placed her phone in the charger. Part of me wanted to believe I was crazy or that I just thought I saw something risque, but my mind was playing tricks on me. I had imagined discovering what I saw was nothing carnal and laughing about what I thought it was. But the passcode got me. I tried acting as normally as possible. She knew me better than anyone, so keeping all emotions welled up while at the same time being sneaky was difficult. But late that afternoon, when she was in the kitchen, I heard her text alert. I popped around the corner just in time to see her enter a brand new code. So I knew I wasn't losing my mind completely. Later that night, after she'd gone to bed, I again took her phone into the bathroom. I entered the new code and opened her photo file. To my surprise, nothing close to a photo containing nudity was anywhere to be found. I even found the photos she'd taken at the church that morning. 
nothing pornographic was among them. I was just about to close the app when I decided to look for deleted photos. To my surprise, I found two photos of my wife nude and partially nude, along with a naked shot of some guy other than me. I quickly sent all three pics to my phone, then deleted that text in the photos. I placed my wife's phone back in the holder, walked to the downstairs restroom to make less noise, and vomited like I'd been given IPCAC. I'd never seen either picture of my wife before. She didn't do that sort of thing, and I didn't really desire it. I could always have her to myself soon enough, given the next opportunity, and I already knew how beautiful she was naked. We just felt like photos like that could always come back to haunt people. She and I were too united as one. We had no need to share our intimacy with the world. Or so I thought. I sure didn't know who the guy was in the picture. I looked at it and felt anger, even though I had no idea who he was or if my wife knew him in any way. After I stopped hurling my guts up, I lay on the floor and cried like a little child. I had never cried harder, but I knew something was wrong, I could feel it. I slept a few hours next to my wife before I had to get up to work. Every project I was working on got put on hold as I researched how to recover texts from a phone. As it turns out, since the plan we had was in my name through my employer, I could access every message and pic sent via text. Long story short, I recovered raunchy messages, selfies, and yes, even pics and videos together, all there. I could say I went and vomited again, but it was dry heaving. I'd gotten rid of the last thing I could throw up at 2 a.m. I went down to my car and cried so hard I thought my eyes would bleed. I couldn't imagine the nightmare I was living was real. But I knew instantly everything with my wife, my best friend, was over, and every dream I had was gone. I yelled primal screams of rage. I was thankful she wasn't there at my moment of discovery. I didn't know what I was capable of, and I didn't want her to see me like that. I couldn't think what to do, where to go, who to call. I was just in shock and the person I would have turned to at a time like that was the very person who had destroyed me, I stopped crying and just sat there in a complete daze, unsure what to do but certain I didn't want to do anything. I knew what had started off as an unproductive morning was certain to be an unproductive day. I went back inside, met with each team member on our company project, and then left work. I didn't even want to look at my wife, so I certainly wasn't going to go by her school to confront her. I just drove around for hours in shock. I went from tears to rage and back again. The evidence was overwhelming and undeniable. I thought of emailing her and both our families all the information I'd found and then driving my car off a ravine. I truly didn't want to continue living, and I certainly didn't want to deal with the confrontation to end our marriage once and for all. My wife usually got home a few hours from work before I did. So, I parked down the street from her school to see where she went when she got off from work. I had it in my mind from what I'd found she'd probably head to her lover's house for a quickie after work. But she left and went straight home, oblivious I was following her most of the way. I'd printed out pages and pages of texts and pictures at work to show her what I knew. I anticipated confronting her and her denying anything until I showed her proof, which led to much conversation and fighting. I didn't want that. I didn't want to ever lay eyes on her again, talk to her, or be in her presence ever again. Those pictures, in particular, ended all love I ever had for her in an instant. In fact, in the course of a day, I went from loving her more than I knew it possible, for a human to love, to hate her with every fiber of my being. How she could do to me what she did was mind-boggling. We were done the second she cheated, I was just the last to get the memo. My mind was all over the place. I just wanted to go into the house, pack a bag and leave without seeing her or saying a word if possible. When I walked in the front door she was sitting on the couch, texting. She may have been texting her mom, her sister and almost anyone else, but I knew she wasn't texting me. And that day, I'd learned the odds were high she was busy doing more things that could cause me more pain. She smiled and noted that I was home from work early. I didn't say a word to her. I just walked down the hall into our bedroom. I'd had a suitcase out of the closet and began packing clothes for my stay in a hotel room for the work week. She came into the bedroom, saw me packing, and asked if I had to go on a sudden business trip. I stopped what I was doing, looked directly at her with a stare of absolute loathing, and then continued packing. She walked up to me, asked me what was wrong, and placed her hand on my back. I recoiled from her touch as I just had some dead animal carcass filled with maggots touch me I turned and yelled at her loudly to never touch me again before pushing her away. When she tried to ask what was wrong, I called her a disease-filled whore that deserved to have a fiery hot poker inserted into her privates to keep her from procreating. 
she had the audacity to look shocked and hurt. That's when I pulled out the stack of papers I copied, threw them onto the bed, closed my suitcase and began to leave. She sat down to look at the papers. Before I got down the hall, I heard her scream no, before breaking down in tears and running to catch me. I made out the door to my car and threw my suitcase in the back. She managed to make it outside before I pulled off. I extended my middle finger in her direction as I drove away. My phone started going off like a casino slot machine, so I just turned it off. My plan was to completely ghost her and let whatever steps needed to be done for divorce taken care of by my lawyer. I didn't want to know how they met, why it happened, and what exactly had occurred between them. She knew damn well infidelity was a deal breaker. I had no idea why she was even calling, but I didn't care. I got a motel room about a mile from my job and checked in. I walked to an adjacent restaurant and forced down some food I didn't want to eat. Back in the room, I used the motel phone to call my mom and tell her where I was. She'd been worried as she'd been one of the first people my wife had called after I left. I asked my mom if she'd been told why I left, and she admitted she hadn't. I told her what I'd found, explained we would be divorcing, and said I'd be looking for a job in another state so I never had to run into my STBXW or any of her family again. I asked her to keep what she knew between her, my dad, and my siblings. My mom cried. I wasn't there to see it, but it sounded like ugly crying and disbelief. But the realization my wife and her family were no longer any part of our lives hurt. I'm sure knowing she'd never hold a grandchild fathered by me hurt a lot too. But she knew how I was raised, so she also knew I was done. I was exhausted after the call with my mom. So I cried myself to sleep, only to be awakened by a knock at the door around midnight. I got up and looked out the peephole to see my STBXW anxiously waiting for me to open the door. I couldn't grasp how she'd found me, much less figure out what room I was in. But I did not want to see her or hear her voice. After what she did to me, she lost any right to even look in my general direction. So again, I used the motel phone. But instead of calling my mom, I called the local police. I stayed on the line explaining the situation as they sent two officers. I watched as the police removed my STBXW from the front of the door and led her over to the squad car. Then, one officer knocked on the door, and I let him into the room. He assured me they wouldn't let my wife in, and asked how I wanted them to proceed. I explained I wanted her to leave me alone, and I wanted absolutely no contact with her ever again. He and I filled out all the necessary paperwork for a restraining order. He made sure the RO was what I wanted since it would limit me from being able to go back to my house on my own to get things without a police escort. I told him I never wanted to enter that house again. I was done with her, and she and the rest of our belongings could have it. He got her to sign the RO. I watched her and the cops drive away, then went back to bed for a few hours. I made it to work the next day. Everyone asked how I felt since they all thought I left due to illness. I told them I still felt a bit under the weather and told them I'd be working in my office all day just in case what I had was contagious. I called my boss and asked him for a good time to meet in my office. Fifteen minutes later he was sitting across from me, I'm sure he was there to get an update on my team's project. When I explained the previous day I'd discovered my wife had been cheating, he seemed almost as shocked as I was. I didn't begin to mention I'd soon be looking for another job out of state. But I did convey there was no chance of reconciliation and as far as I was concerned, my wife was dead to me. It was all I could do to maintain composure and not cry. However, I explained to my boss that I planned to dive into my work to distract me from my personal life. I explained at that moment that I needed the actual work far more than the paycheck that came with it. He assured me I could work as much as I wanted and even crash in my office when needed. I thanked him for his kindness before asking him to keep everything between us until word leaked out. After work that day, I went to my parents' house for dinner. They had all my siblings and their spouses over as well. My parents called me aside as dinner was ending and suggested I let everyone there know what had happened and was about to happen. There were still a few people eating when I began to talk. But the news sort of ruined everyone's appetites. They all were as shocked and enraged as I had been. Two of my siblings had gotten calls from my ex when I left and had felt sorry for her. Both wished they'd known what was going down so they could have given her a piece of their minds. I assured them and the rest of my family I just wanted my wife and anyone related to her ignored, blocked from contact and ostracized. I explained it wasn't her family's fault that my wife was a worthless whore. My wife had proved she was unworthy of any attention, positive or negative, sent her way. 
I then explained I would be looking for a new job in another state over the coming weeks. Some family members were angered. They weren't mad at me for feeling that was what I needed to do. They were mad that my wife sinned and I was being punished by being removed from those who loved and cared about me. It didn't seem even remotely fair, I agreed. But the chances of getting every human related to her to leave the state out of shame weren't happening. The next day I met with my lawyer for the first time. We live in an at-fault state, so the stack of papers proving infidelity was a welcome sight to her. I tried to approach that meeting with 100% logic and no emotion. All emotions are temporary, and letting your emotions lead you through life is a recipe for utter chaos. I explained she and her staff would need to be the go-between for my wife and me until the divorce was finalized. I also explained there was a restraining order in place. I told her I didn't care about any of our possessions. Everything we owned reminded me of my STBXW, so I didn't want a single item or our house. I was only concerned that she could not touch my 401k or other investments given to me before marriage. That's when my lawyer asked if I wanted the divorce to be a fair and equal divorce or scorched earth. I looked down and thought for a few moments. The emotional turmoil I was enduring had reached the point it was causing actual physical pain. I knew the events I was living through had changed everything forever, and there was no going back. A week before, if I'd been presented with a fair and no holes barred option, I would have gone with the fair route. But I felt nothing but loathing and disgust for the woman who lied to me nearly my whole life and betrayed me like no one else had. I instructed my lawyer to take every available avenue to make the divorce as painful as possible. Any item my lawyer managed to get from my STBXW for me would just go into a big bonfire after everything was finalized. But at that moment, I envisioned that bonfire being so large and bright that it could be seen from space. I wanted her to go after my wife financially, and if they could figure out who the AP was, to also go after him. My state has alienation of affection laws, which allow a person to sue someone who contributed to the end of a marriage in civil court. I told my lawyer that he should contact his partner if they discovered he was in a relationship. In short, I wanted to make everything hell on earth for them both. I wanted to convey to my wife I hated her beyond words, and I was out for blood. I wanted to destroy her life as she'd so casually destroyed mine, and let the pieces fall where they may. My lawyer called me at work today to let me know my wife had been served at her job. She asked me to come by after work to talk with the messenger they'd sent to serve my wife's papers. Knowing she'd been served and grasping that I would never be any part of her life again was enough. But I decided to listen to the messenger, hoping he might tell me my STBXW jumped out of a window after being served. He and I sat in an office without my lawyer present as he explained he'd taken the paperwork by the school at around 10 a.m. He checked in with the front office as a courier and a member of the faculty led him to my wife's classroom. She was in the middle of a lesson as the employee opened the door. The courier said he walked past the staff member, asked my wife to verify her name, and told her she had now been served with official divorce papers due to infidelity. He said my STBXW was obviously shocked at the speed at which I was moving, embarrassed to be served at work in front of her students and fighting back tears. He told me as he walked out, she fell onto the floor and began sobbing uncontrollably. That was all good to hear, and I was glad she'd gotten the paperwork. Honestly, I'm not even sure why I'm writing this out. It's been a bit cathartic, but I don't need advice. Well, at least I don't think so. As stated, I have everything planned out, and the divorce is in motion and will take place. I just hurt so bad, and I'm struggling to find a reason to continue. I don't want to. I'm not suicidal. There is no part of me that wants to die. I want my life back, and that is an impossibility. There can be no new life in my future with someone else. She destroyed something pure and beautiful one can only attain once in a given lifetime. And despite her tears, she didn't even care. She took what we had and turned it to ashes with her infidelity. I'm struggling to envision my life totally alone until the day I die, and I don't want to go on. I hate myself for ever giving her a minute of my time, much less for the years of my life, I feel like my entire life has been and will be a wasted life. Sure, I have a career and the capacity to move on. But doing it alone the rest of my days is just overwhelming me. I suppose I need to explain why I said I would never be a father and would be alone from here on out. But I was raised a certain way with a certain mindset. My wife was raised this way as well. It's one of the reasons we were so close. 
I guess in the end, she didn't give a damn about her proper upbringing, and decided to destroy us both in the process. I was raised to believe that humans were never meant to run around sowing oats and having meaningless, tawdry sex with random hookups. I believe the most ideal relationship a human can achieve in this life is one where the two have only known each other. I understand that in modern times, that point of view sounds archaic to most, if not all. But two people discover intimacy together, and every act of intimacy is beautiful. Nobody has to worry about past partners. Nobody has to worry about diseases and pregnancy. Nobody has to worry that they aren't doing something as well as a previous partner there so had because there were no other partners. You learn together. You grow together instead of living a life that would remove any possibility of STDs, unwanted pregnancy, paternity fraud, etc. Our world has made ways to correct those mistakes instead of having to face the consequences of foolish people. Two become one, and nothing can come between them. Or that's what I was led to believe. That is how romantic relationships were meant to be, but humanity has run away from that mindset. That's what my wife claimed to believe to me more times than I could count. I couldn't tell how often my wife claimed to be grateful we lived as we did. She said she cherished that we could know each other in a way few people can. I guess that was all bullshit lies. But it doesn't even matter anymore. Because of that mindset, there can never be reconciliation. And there is no way I could ever view her as attractive after seeing what she was doing behind my back. 1,000 gallons of bleach and a pressure washer couldn't remove the diseased infidelity filth she subjected me to. I view her as defiled, diseased, and dirty. A week ago I could just think about my wife and get aroused. Now she could lay before me naked and ready, and my reaction would be to spit on her in disgust before again vomiting. And as I have known someone else, I can never have that bond with another human. I couldn't date a virgin even if I wanted to because, due to my relationship with my wife, I couldn't be what that hypothetical virgin deserves. I'm sure I will get some hate from various progressive readers who view sex as something to do with random people for fun and list sex as a hobby on their Facebook page. That's all fine and smurfy. Opinions differ, and I know my viewpoint is far from standard anymore. But one man and one woman is the way it has always been supposed to be. My wife turned out to be a lecherous Jezebel come dumpster, so that's my loss and my stupidity for choosing so poorly. I just don't think it's fair that I didn't sin, but I'm the one who has to endure the hell of life the rest of my days totally alone. Edit, those private messages me with harsh messages about the words, one man and one woman being homophobic. It was not meant that way. I meant it to mean, two people, regardless of gender, I feel like two people in one lifelong bond are best. And I'm standing by that. But I'm not editing it after the fact, now that it's been posted. So save your time messaging me trying to claim I am anti-gay. What any two people do in the privacy of their own company is their business and certainly none of mine. I cannot stress enough that I don't care about anyone's sex life. Straight, gay, whatever. I don't care. It's a major reason I don't want to know any more specifics about my wife's affair. Edit 2, Luke 16, 18 Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery and the man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Edit 3 Final Edit I'd been doing a good job focusing solely on work the last few days. I'd made massive progress on the company project since all my time had been spent in my office. It seemed stupid to pay for a motel bed when my office had a comfortable couch. I woke up this morning to get further ahead on the project and begin my job search in other states. But when I sat in my desk chair and saw the date on my computer, I realized it had brought me to tears. Now I'm done. This is my wife's birthday. I had zero plans to send her any well wishes. But it made me consider something I hadn't. That date will always belong to her, at least in my mind. It was bad enough thinking about upcoming holidays, which made me flash back to happier times when I had someone. I think I could always ignore those days and just work. But today's date will always bring her to mind. No matter what I do or where I go, I cannot escape that. Moving away and avoiding her doesn't remove her from my life because she was mine. I want to erase every memory of her in my mind. I want to forget I ever knew her. What were cherished memories just one week ago are now nothing but bitter memories of lies and deception. I can't endure that. I just can't.
It's amazing how quickly life can just flip the script on you and destroy your entire world overnight. Obviously, from the comments I got, many loathe me, including my views and beliefs. I'm fine with that. I'm honestly not usually one to use the language and terms I used in my post. I just felt her actions said much harsher things than any words I could say to my wife ever could. But when things end, they end, much like life. Sure, I could seek help to convince myself that everything hadn't been as bad as it seemed. But my grandpa taught me not to blow smoke up anyone's ass, especially my own. So it's done, and so am I. This isn't the time or matter I envisioned it ending. But sometimes, this life can be too cruel to continue. God bless you, everyone. May you know peace in this life? I would not wish love upon anyone. Even my worst enemy.